Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review and good news for all you Move Monkeys card people out there because today I'm going to be talking about Primetime Marlowe Remastered by Steve Reynolds. Before I talk about this, can you please like and subscribe? Very important. Share it if you want verbally. That'd be lovely. Just tell people about the channel. That'd be great. And uh, check out onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site. Talking about moves, there are loads and loads of card moves on there, but also courses on coin magic, rope magic, and a new course on rubber band magic, which is getting some lovely responses. So have a look at onlinemagic.co and very importantly, read the Trustpilot reviews. It's important. Don't take my word for it because I'm bias. That's what I am. And with this uh, onlinemagic.co, learn from a pro. Got to say that. Well, I haven't really. Talking about um, <laughs> bias, proper heads up, full disclosure, um, I have been through this in depth, but I am also a bit of a fan, obviously, of Ed Marlowe, well, not obviously, some people aren't, uh, John Rackabama's books and Steve Reynolds. Now, Steve Reynolds has coached me in card magic because I believe all of the best pros should get coaching in every field. And uh, so I do have a connection with Steve, so probably going to be a bit biased, but I'm going to try not to be. All right, but I do really like it. It's great because it's about Marlowe and that. So what is primetime Marlowe? Well, I'll go with what it was originally, what it is. Primetime Marlowe, Marlio, <laughs> Marlo, uh, was a piece of film or a film about an hour long filmed by John Rackabama in 1972 when Marlo, Ed Marlowe was 50 uh, in his kitchen, which is lovely. And it's, you know, this sort of grainy, old school footage that's been doing the rounds for years. It was actually put together in the mid nineties by John Rackabama, uh, narrating it and narrating what you were seeing and telling you what you were seeing and giving you an, an insight in what Ed was doing. And this was, a, there wasn't much or isn't much footage of Ed Marlowe. And if you don't know Ed Marlowe, do give it a Google. Ed Marlowe, along with Di Vernon, uh, I see them as the two and there are many more. Don't get me wrong, don't get offended. But when I think of the card magic greats, the kind of big innovators. I always think of Marlowe, Vernon, and of course all the other people, but they're the, the big ones for me that I kind of read and follow and, and geek out on. So incredible technician, uh, incredible skills, and an absolute legend in card magic, and just very prolific, just published loads and loads and loads of, uh, of material, but very little film. So any Marlowe fan or card fan, I think, will jump at the chance to watch Marlowe in action. Now, there are a few things available. There's a Lost, I think it's called the Lost Lecture or something like that on Vanishing. Ink. Just Google Ed Marlowe on there, which I really enjoyed, uh, which is a part of a lecture. It's the chance to see Marlowe chatting to an audience and doing his thing. And there are the Cardition and you know, a few other things. But this one was one of those things that I... Was it's kind of it was out of action for a while. You couldn't get hold of it. I'd, I'm not going to lie to you. I knew people with copies and and I'd watch it with them and stuff like that. But you couldn't really get it for a while. And then Steve Reynolds has has given it to us again. He's remastered it, and I'll tell you what that means in a minute. With importantly, this companion book. Now, when you're watching the original, you have John Rackabama telling you what Marla was doing, and what this does, it delves a bit deeper and tells you or shows you how to do it. So there's that. This also has scans of Marlowe's notes in it, which is great for all those people that, that get a lovely feeling from looking at those original scans and the notes and the sort of scruffy handwritten stuff. And the film also has, you know, bits of where Muriel Marlowe comes into camera, which is lovely to see. You kind of imagine them in this kitchen shooting this stuff. And it was very much a kind of improvised jam. Um, and this also has end notes, which Steve says gives you that bit more detail and where to look further. If you want to sort of, if you see a moving here and it's given a brief description here, you can then go forward and, you know, look online or look where you can find out more and get further publications from Marlowe and other people that will sort of um, send you down that research rabbit hole, which I love so much, which I kind of did a bit last night, which was great. So I started looking at this a few months ago when I was in Sweden. Uh, no, it wasn't. I was in Norway. <laughs> Two completely different countries, Steve. Uh, got really into it and then didn't get back to it for some reason and spent the last few days really going back and watching the whole film with the companion and reading it. What Steve has done, he's given 
I would call brief detail, but it doesn't expand for ages on each routine because then it would have been a big book and this is a companion piece. It's not a separate book in itself and there are many places to get that detail. So what this is, is you get the book, you look for the thing, you look here, he tells you what Marlowe's doing, gives you instructions what to do, and teaches you the trick and then it's up to you to kind of practice it and refine it and I don't sometimes I don't think we need that detail I think actually if we just turn that research thing off and actually look at what we're doing we can get there ourselves because all our hands are different and we will do things slightly differently and there's the history behind a lot of the moves as well where they come from and as I said some of these are unpublished so first of all the film this isn't a review of primetime Marlowe even though of course it is because it's the remastered one so it's been remastered and I don't think you're going to get some of that sort of like sort of a 4k print of this this was super 8 film with kind of low light and the original there's a lot of sort of crushed blacks you know there's, there's sort of, you couldn't see much in the background you couldn't see much color even though it was color and this is kind of raised all that so you can see more color in it. You can see like the close up had more what's going on when Muriel's hand and face come into the camera. You can see all that a bit more clearly. The music's been changed. It was originally Brian Eno and Vangelis, Vangelis uh, who I really like. And this is Steve has used interestingly. And this sounds like a, uh, a, it would be a detriment, but it's really not. He's used music that. I don't know what it is, but it's it's a lot. There's a lot less going on, and this really helped me. It's quite repetitive in a really good way, and it didn't distract. Now the original music was quite high, and for me it distracted a little bit. Even though it was great, but it kind of I love Brian and Brian Eno, like massive Eno fan, but it kind of put a date on it, and this I think made it easier to watch in detail, and it didn't distract me quite so much. So, and the the volume of the of John's voice is different in it. The, the, when you look at the original, you can see some a little bit more noise in it. Now there is noise in this, obviously, and I don't mean I mean the noise you can see, the kind of you know the ticks and bumps or whatever on the screen. They're still there, of course, but that's been cleaned up a little bit. And there are some extra little bits of footage. You know, Steve will repeat stuff and not loads, but I'd say probably another minute and a half put in there, a couple of minutes, and I could be completely wrong about that time. Sorry, Steve, of repeating things that he feels that would be good for you to see again uh, and I think there might even be a bit of footage that wasn't in there at all of kind of there's a bit where he holds the fan up and it wasn't in the original anyway so you're getting you're getting that but the good thing is you can see the the video and it's not a massive leap but it's you know it's available to us and it's in slightly better quality but the real work comes comes with this and I have you know there's some routines on here and in prime time Marlowe you get a prime time Marlowe you get a bit of everything you get forces um, controls, vanishes, deck switches, utility moves, everything you want. There's different versions of the pass. Um, there's color changes. So all those things with that Marlowe twist, some more practical than others. And some admittedly, by John, when he's talking about it, you wouldn't perform it. And there's a bit where the kind of camera pans back and Ed Marlowe's look, he says something like, Ed Marlowe's looking at me as if to say, well, I could never perform that or get away with that in public. So this is a real, this isn't like something you're going to watch and go, I'm going to do these routines. Some of you will get that out of it a little bit, but it's more about watching someone, learning from someone and sitting there with the deck of cards and, and enhancing your skill level and your understanding and of cards, magic and Ed Marlowe. There's a, a phrase, and I don't want to get it wrong, halfway through the book by John Rackabama, and this was just in conversation, and he says the real work is like the North Star. We may not be able to obtain it, but we can use it as a guide. I love that because it, there is so much obsession about, can you use it? Can you do it in a gig? And I think when you're buying certain things, that's really important. But with this, I don't sit with Marlowe or Vernon or any of these people to say, what can I put in a gig? It's more about going into it and just getting better with cards, understanding more, and then that stuff comes later. And I do think so many magicians have a real lack of understanding of all the different things you can do, all the different concepts and all those things that can act as a creative springboard to get us to another place. And I do think having that sort of background knowledge of moves, concepts, everything, you know, mentalism, magic will allow you to feel more comfortable on stage in your performance, but also provide so much joy. And that for me is what is the hobbyist in me. I love the process as I did last night, again, of just sitting with this one more time with the cards in hand, geeking out and going into a, a kind of looking at John's other books and finding another thing and texting Steve going, actually, where can I find that? 
that to me is part of the joy. It's not just about can I do it in a gig. And this is for those people. This is for the card magic enthusiast. It does also presume a level of knowledge. Now, you can't go into this as a complete beginner and be able to do this stuff. And actually, I think there's some joy in just sitting back and watching it and then going to the to the material and seeing what it is. I, I enjoyed that part of it. But, you know, it will say he does this move. And if you don't know a few of the moves, well, good news, you can Google it. And there's one that I didn't, and I Googled, and you can find it on, you know, the um, Dennis Bear's uh, Conjuring Archive and the, the Genie Archives and all that. So good news on that. You can find out where to find out more, but it does expect you sometimes to, to either have prior knowledge or do the research. That's a joy for me. That's the happiness. That's the fun. That's why I do it. For some people, you're going to want to step back a bit and do something a bit more basic. But for inspiration, I think it's great. Incidentally, you know, when you start watching these old bits of footage that look completely different and grainy, it, it starts and you kind of go, oh, and then after, it's almost like subtitles. After a very short amount of time, you just forget. You're just in, in it and watching it. And that's a, a testament to what I'm watching. But also, I think we do that anyway. We, we, we put so much emphasis on shot in HD or, and actually the really good stuff. And you'll find this if you watch old cinema. After a while, it doesn't matter. If the story's there and, and the, the work is there, then that's the thing that will draw you in. And, and that very much does this with me. So that should give you all you need to know. This comes with the book either the pdf or the printed book and if you are overseas like if you're in the uk um it will be shipped from the uk i believe so you don't have to sort of add all that uh, postage on top of it and the the film itself uh, i recommend both and i think it's a, it's a good price i'm not going to say it now because it might change it but it's a good price for both of them and i think the steve the stuff steve puts out and yes i am biased but the reason for that is because everything he does is with knowledge and clarity and also passion. He's really, really passionate about this stuff, as of course is John Rackabama, and that's why they're doing the work. They're not putting this out to make loads of money. They know it's not gonna do that because this is a niche thing, but, uh, but I think you should support these things because it, it, it gives us a piece of history, but it also reminds us where we come from and is massively inspiring. I've practiced this. I can't do a lot of it very well at the moment, but things like the open air assembly is something the minute I saw it, I fell in love with, and there'll be a bit of footage of me practicing it quite badly. And, uh, and there's a vanish native routine at the beginning, which I kind of go, yeah, I can, if you look at each bit of that, you go, well, that's not very convincing, but then you see Mala do it and you, you think about the whole gestalt of it, the whole whole of it. And actually you realize that you can do some very cheeky stuff, and this is also echo, echoed in Brother John Hammond's work, where if you look individually, you go, that's way too cheeky. But it flies because of the rhythm of the routine. And one more thing on this. When you watch this, don't just look at the truth, but look at where, and this is, I got Steve as well, is look at where the hand that isn't working is. Look at the choreography. Look at the, the economy of movement. And I'm not just saying find a reason to put you, it's not just about motivating movement, it's about where is the hand, the hand that's holding out, but also the hand that isn't holding out, and look at the, the clarity of this. And it's just a joy to see someone like Ed Marlowe at their kitchen kind of improvising and John going, you know, what, do, if a, a, borrow a deck of cards, find the aces and see how he deals with that. Incidentally, there's a couple of bits that aren't in the book because they are actually Marlowe looking for the aces, cutting to him and, and uh, doing that. And there are kind of riffle stacking systems as well. So. There it is, Primetime Marlow. I know it's a long one, but a lot to say, a lot more to say. Make sure you ask questions. Thurs most Thursdays, live at five. So make sure when you like and subscribe, or when you subscribe, click the little bell icon. Make sure you get all the notifications, because like this week, I won't be able to go live on a Thursday, so I'll probably do it on a Wednesday. All that sort of stuff. So uh, thanks very much. Have a look at that. Use the links below. Thank you, Steve. Instantly, also, Steve is at time of recording in the UK for the first time ever lecturing. If you see him, Check out where he's lecturing and uh, and go and see him. I really recommend you go and see, you know, a, a student of John Rackabama and in turn Marlowe uh, do his stuff. It's stunning. Right. And apparently he's doing that open air um, assembly as well, which I can't wait to see. Right. That's me lot. Uh, go and look at onlinemagic.co. Have a nice one. Cheers.